Thank you. So thanks very much for the nice introduction. When people introduce me like this, I always have, to, always have the feeling that people want me to retire, right? You've done enough, uh, <laughs> just, just stop. But I'm not there uh, yet. Uh, so uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I'm very happy to see uh, many people uh, here. And uh, I will talk about my favorite hobby, that is uh, process mining. And uh, many of you, I assume, are not aware of process mining. I think many of you are not aware of processes. You only realize that there are processes if things do not work, right? So you apply for a credit card or you want to have a new phone number or something like that, and it takes weeks and you have lots of interactions, then you realize that there are processes. So we'd like to, to walk a bit uh, through how process mining is making these processes better. Probably when you came here, you have been interacting with many services that were somehow optimized or were co are continuously being monitored using process mining. And I think that's very helpful uh, that you realize that in the background that these things are there. So what you see here is a car factory, right? If the manager looks into a car factory, it is completely clear if there is a problem, what the problem is. Hey, you see that production stops. And you can look at what are the, the, the real reasons that things are broken and why things are not working. So this is relatively easy, but at the same time, even a car factory may stop because of uh, that, I don't know, Bosch is not delivering parts to BMW or something like that. So this is also influenced by things outside. But here it is still pretty visible, if there is a problem, what that problem would be. But at the same time, you are often involved in processes that you do not see, where it is not like a car factory where you can easily get an overview of what the, the different problems are. And a nice anecdote is that uh, we have four children and we moved to Germany, let's say, five and a half years uh, ago. And uh, it took over one year to get child support here in Germany for my four uh, children. Yeah, so there were various times where, where we lost children. There were all kinds of uh, confusing interactions between the Dutch organizations and the German organizations. It took one year. I had to write literally 50 letters to get it OK. And I'm I think I'm not the only person moving from the Netherlands to Germany. But these are experiences that you probably also have. If you are interacting with s some organizations, then often it goes well. But there are also these situations where things go dramatically uh, wrong. And these are taking a lot of effort. And using process mining, we are trying to analyze the root causes of such problems and try to address them in an automated uh, way. So, so what you see here is kind of a a quick overview of what process mining does. So there is data in all kinds of information systems. Yeah, so you've probably heard of systems like uh, SAP or Oracle or, or, or any of the systems that large organizations are using. And from these systems, we extract events. And if we extract events, we can use them to automatically discover the processes. So we are discovering the processes that you don't see. Right? I was uh, telling about this problem with my child support. This is not a process that you can see, like in a car factory. Right? It, it, it is in emails, it is in all kinds of interactions between different people. And using process mining, you can make these processes visible. And often, if we do that, and people see their processes, they are flabbergasted. Right? They do not recognize their own processes, and they immediately see all kinds of things to improve. After uh, doing this discovery step, what we uh, then do, then, that, then we have an idea, OK, the processes are very different than we want them to be. And then we basically modify these as-is models into to-be models, what we would like to happen. And after we do that, we can each time there are, let's say, problems, we can immediately uh, generate triggers, and people can act upon that. And so for example, if they start seeing, OK, many people moving from the Netherlands to Germany, they all are running into lots of issues that is taking an incredible amount of time. Let's try to, 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 to address that problem uh, there. So, so, so these are the basics. And what you can also do, if you have enough data, you can even predict there is a problem. So you can predict whether a certain case is going to be delayed. Or you can predict that, I don't know, an organization is going to deviate. You can predict 
that the car will not be produced because parts are not there, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is the predictive part. And in the end, of course, you would like to change these processes. So using process mining, you can automatically, uh, let's say, intervene in these processes and automatically take actions to address them. And so this is in a, is in a nutshell, uh, let's say, process mining. This is not the software that you see on your handy. But this is the software that is being used in organizations to, let's say, make processes uh, better. Um, so what I just showed was a top-down view. Now I'm going to show you a bottom-up uh, view. So this is an example of event data. It's not important that you understand what it is actually is. But this could be data extracted from a system like SAP. Right? So you extract data from such a system. Then you may see something like this. And uh, so for example, you, if you look here at the record, then uh, a customer may place an order at a particular point in time, and the customer is ordering specific products, et cetera, et cetera. Later, the customer pays, et cetera, et cetera. So these are examples of events. And to do process mining, to get started, we basically reduce this to something that is very simple. So for every event, so everything that has happened, we need to record a timestamp when it happened. That is easy to imagine. Uh, the second thing that we need is the activity, payment, placing an order. But also, if you go to a hospital, taking a blood test. If you are a student, getting your grade for a particular course. These are all examples of events. And all of these events need to be related to what we call a case here. And in this example, a case is an order. But you can also think of if you're treating patients, for example, for COVID, then every COVID patient that you're treating, you can think of that as a case. And you want to track down what is happening. And that is also one of the applications, for example, we are doing here in Aachen, for example, to analyze how COVID patients are being treated. But we are also using it to analyze, um, for example, how students are studying and why they drop out, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so so this, is used, this is very generic use for any process. So, Based on this very simple observation, you can start constructing models. And models are simply representations of what is happening. And there, something very interesting happens. This is often what people want to happen, right? They think of processes, you need to do that, 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 and then we're done. And of course, they know it is not so simple. So they realize that there are also, let's say, some, some things that can happen that you cannot let's say, simply walk the happy path that there are some, some deviations. So this is the view. If people make PowerPoints, how do we do this? They draw something like this, right? But now you look at reality, and reality always looks like this, right? It always looks like spaghetti, and this is still a very small, simple process, right? Just for you to imagine this, if you look at the process, for example, an organization like Siemens, and Siemens is uh, handling customer orders, and then you think, oh, this is a boring process. Uh, a customer orders something from Siemens. I don't know, they need to pay, they need to order it, just a few steps, and it's done. If you look at one year in Siemens, and you just look at the sequences of activities, just as I show you here, you will see that in a company like Siemens, this very simple process, uh, there are 900,000 different variants. Right? So 900,000 different ways of handling a customer order, a process that everybody thinks is simple. So, so this is the challenge, and this is where process mining provides visibility and gives the tools to address people to, to look at the, these problems. Yeah, so to summarize it a bit, yeah, so, 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 and I think many of you have heard of the 80-20 rule or a Pareto distribution. Um, so what you see is that if you look at 80, the 80% 80 of the cases that are, let's say, uh, very regular, right, then the process is very simple, right? But the remaining 20%, so in this remaining 20%, there is this Dutch guy moving to, 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 to Germany, et cetera, et cetera. In this 20%, there are all the variants, right? So only 20% of the variants uh, explain 80% of all the cases, but that means that in the last 20%, there is all the variability. So in this last 20% that you add, you have all the inefficiencies, you have all the compliance problems, you have, uh, let's say, all the things that you need to worry about. 
And if people look at PowerPoints or they look at simple, let's say, dashboard spreadsheets, they don't see, uh, let's say, this 20% that is causing all the different problems. So using process mining, we can discover what is really going on. If you have an idea of what is going on, you can immediately do many things to make processes better. Then you make a normative model, this is what I want to happen, and you can automatically take action the moment that things are deviating. So this is a very powerful technology that allows to do these things. And this is not something, it can run on your handy, but this is uh, what you see behind the walls of large organizations that are using this technology to improve their processes. And at this stage, um, process mining is being used, specifically if you look in countries like Germany and the Netherlands, it is used by most of the larger organizations already. Yeah, so this is a success story, that something that was developed in research made it into industry in such a, a, a fast way. So if you look at these logos, and I could have shown you 1,000 other logos, but for example, if you look at uh, telecom operators, Vodafone, T-Mobile, etc., they are all using process mining. If you look at car manufacturers, Ferrari, Porsche, but all, also BMW, Mercedes, etc., they're all using process mining, for example, to analyze their production processes. Yes, so, so this is something that is uh, omnipresent. Also Uber, you cannot use it here, but also Uber is using process mining. Yes, so, so there are all these services that you are using uh, that you may not be aware of that they are optimized using this. Just to, 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 to share an interesting example, where I've been, uh, I, like a few weeks ago, I gave a, t a, a keynote at the, at the Lufthansa conference. And Lufthansa is one of the organizations that is using process mining to analyze all kinds of processes, including the process of a plane that is landing, for example, in Frankfurt or Munich. A plane is landing and then needs to take off again. And if you have uh, flights inside Europe, sometimes you need to do that in one hour, right? In one hour, the plane is landing, uh, like the, the passengers leave the plane, new passengers go in, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then the plane has to take off. In one hour, this has to happen. And this is another process that we think, okay, this looks very uh, simple, very easy, but think about it. Yeah, so all the uh, all the passengers have to get out of the plane. New passengers need to get into the plane. But you also have fueling. Fueling starts, fueling ends. The baggage needs to be unloaded and loaded again. Also, uh, there is cleaning of the plane. So the cleaning crew goes in and the cleaning crew comes out. So these are just examples of events that are happening. And if one of these things goes wrong, right? Uh, the, the, the baggage is delivered too late then that flight gets delayed, and that flight is going to another airport, and if it got delayed, there will be delays there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there will be a cascade of problems just by, I don't know, the cleaning crew not being there in time. And this is a nice example uh, on operations of a process. Uh, you, you've probably been at airports, you also see that often things do not run the way that they should run, but you see how powerful insights are if you can find the root causes of such uh, issues. And, and I hope that this example makes it a bit clear in your mind how you can uh, use that. So my personal challenge is to automatically create models which capture reality as well as possible. And once we have these digital models of reality, we completely understand why there are certain problems, but also how we can address them. Yeah, so we can do what-if scenarios. What if we change this and this? What would happen? And that is, I don't know, if you create a digital twin of, for example, an engine that is relatively simple, right? It's very much limited uh, where you are. But if you make a digital model of an organization, that is a bit more tricky, right? And you can see why uh, there is still a lot of research needed in, in this space. So, that was a bit what, what process mining is all about, why it is relevant, and I hope that I gave an idea of what, what is in there. So uh, I'm generally seen as the inventor of process mining, and I started to work on this in the late 90s. And the reason that I started to work on this was that I was very disappointed 
by people making process models by hand, and I was very disappointed, in, very disappointed in many projects where the company decided to buy software to improve their processes, but in the end, often the software was not even used. As I saw lots of, uh, let's say, disasters happening, let's say, in the mid-90s, where companies were investing heaps of money to improve their processes, but nothing happened. And why was that the case? Because people were thinking about processes in terms of PowerPoints. And so they just had the PowerPoint diagram, that was their view of the process, and therefore it did, did not uh, work. So what I did is I, I uh, reversed the process and I started to just analyze the data. And that was for me a super interesting academic challenge, right? I just, I just look at data and I want to create uh, processes. Now that sounds very logical, but at that point in time, everybody said that I was nuts. Uh, and uh, like I, I developed these algorithms. I also simulated many of my students to start, uh, let's say, process mining companies. So at this point in time, there are, uh, let's say, over uh, 40 process mining companies, many of them located here in, in Europe. And for example, the, the, the prime example, I'm, I'm also the chief scientist of Salonis, and Salonis is the most valuable uh, startup in Germany at this point in time. Yeah, so, 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 so this is like really a success story, just like, for example, SAP in the past was a success story. This is one of the few examples where, let's say, Europe is leading compared to, let's say, mother, many other areas in, in the world. So, of course, uh, when you give a talk like that, everybody thinks, OK, let's talk about AI and machine learning, chat GPT, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look at uh, process mining, you can see that as machine learning, right? Data goes in, and you learn something on data. And the definition of machine learning is doing stuff by learning on data rather than being programmed. So in that sense, it is machine learning. But now you look at the mainstream people, the mainstream directions of what people are doing in the machine learning area, they're doing com something completely different. Yeah, so process mining is not the same as neural networks or chat GPT or something like that. It's a completely different technology. But at the same time, it's a technology that is helping us to, to uh, let's say, change uh, these problems into machine learning problems. I think many of us realize that we are becoming a bit scared of uh, things related to AI. Uh, there are all these warnings related to chat GPT. Uh, this is a very different technology. We are not hall hallucinating, let's say, creatively what things could be. No, it is a very, let's say, data-driven, very precise method where we are not making up uh, uh, things. At the same time, and that is something that I would like to, to close with, is that I would like uh, to stress the fact that here in Europe, also here in Germany, we need to really invest in the base of the technology stack. One of the problems that I see that we have at this point uh, in time is that if we think of information systems like a pizza, uh, in the US, the pizza base is being created, and we just worry about the toppings, and we should also really think about the pizza base itself. Core technologies that are very important, uh, and, and we should work on these types of things, and I think process mining is one of the examples, uh, let's say, in this space. Thank you very much for your attention.